YouTube. So like, share, comment, and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified of the new shows that come about. I am Nicole Taylor. I am healing through experiences, literally. And so today we are in the finance game and we have Master Drake, but his name is Sean Drake. And he is here to give us some more tips about life insurance, what you didn't know, what you should know, and how it is more affordable than you ever thought it could be. So yep. Sean, thank you for coming back again. Let's drop some nuggets on the people and Morning. give them what they need to help them heal. Yeah, so um, glad to be back. Thanks for having me. We're gonna, we're gonna really have a little fun today and uh, I've got a presentation for you. You know, I think uh, a lot of time. Yeah, I know, right? I'm, I'm spoiling you. So I like to be spoiled. Yeah. Be so, spoiled. you know, a lot of times people, um, you know, if, if I say it, it's, it's sometimes it's unbelievable. Ah, that sounds too good to be, be true. But if you see it for yourself, then all of a sudden it, um, you know, it's like, well, maybe there's some, a little something to this. So uh, this month is September is Life Insurance Awareness Month. And so uh, the entire month of September, I have been, you know, putting information out on social media, talking to people about the importance of life insurance, uh, you know, just encouraging people, hey, just get a quote. That's all you got to do. Just get a quote. Uh, you. you know, that, that's, that's where you want to start. Get a quote on the different types of insurances that are out there and, you know, just begin the journey there. And, you know, that way, at least, you know, what you're, what you're working with, and then you can start, you know, bringing this into your, uh, you know, bringing it into your, your, your budget, you know, because it, it, is something, it is something that you have to have. And, you know, yes. I'm going to, again, I agree. I did you know, that. We don't pull any punches here. So I'm going to say something no. that may be a little, little controversial. Hey, but, we've um, done it before. So let it rip. <laughs> right. So listen, this is listen, understanding that healing is not a Woo, woo, woo. No, it's none yeah, of that. No. It is getting to the core. It is understanding like, yeah, you might need to get punched in the gut, you know, mentally to get you started on where you need to go. I was one of those people. And so because of the education and awareness that I have and open to awareness and information, I'm like, yeah, it, if it has to hurt, it has to hurt because it hurt me, but I feel better knowing yeah. and have implemented implemented uh yeah. now especially yeah. in this age of you know what we're dealing with so talk absolutely to so let, let me say this to um you know anybody that's listening you know within the sound of our voice you know we're i'm not going to turn a blind eye to what's happening in the streets right now you know we we've got you know people that are being killed um innocently there are people who you know are asleep in their homes and end up dead you know brianna taylor you know people that get routine traffic stops and they get killed George Floyd, uh, you know, the gentleman up in Kenosha, um, uh, Blake, you know, and, and I mean, the list goes on and on. So we, we, we know all of these things. Here's, here is the difference maker in my 16 year opinion of working in insurance and financial services is if each person that was senselessly killed in the streets had a half a million to a million dollars worth of life insurance coverage, the insurance companies would turn and start lobbying against the police departments for reform, would start lobbying against the justice departments for reform, would, would start implementing change. One of the questions that I get all the time implementing insurance policies is, what happens if the insurance company goes out of business, right? Yeah. Which on the surface, on the surface is a legitimate question. You know, what mm -hmm. happens? You need to understand your state laws of, um, you know, who you're working with. Are you working with a fly-by-night insurance company? Are you working with one that's got, you know, 50, 70, 100 years worth of experience, billions of dollars of insurance premium on the books, reinsured by, you know, multi-billion dollar, hundred billion dollar companies, right? You got to understand those things and the laws on the state where you are. An insurance policy is nothing more than a contract between you and an insurance company, right? Right. And there's two, for lack of a better term, there are two wagers or two bets that are going on right now, okay? You, the consumer, are betting that you're going to die too soon, okay? 
that's what you're betting. That's why you, you are transferring the risk of you passing away too soon. And all of that, all of the risks associated with your income being cut short, you're transferring that risk to the insurance company because you're thinking, you know what? I may not make it home tonight. Okay. That's all you're saying. And you got to think about all the things that come with that. You know, the, your family is going to be devastated if you don't come home tonight. They're going to be sad. They're going to be devastated. But think of all of the things that go along with that, right? So it's the end of the month. So you know what everybody's thinking about right now? A hey, rent's due in two days, <laughs> right? Your landlord does not care that you died, okay? What they, what, what, the only thing they care about is, so are you making that payment? Are you, are you telling me this because you are or are not making the payment in two days, right? Like, so... That's the first thing. And then everything that goes along with it, the, 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 the heating and cooling, right? The electric bill, you know, your kids, you got kids left behind. They still want Cheerios. They still want Frosted Flakes. They still want all the stuff that's in the refrigerator. They're going to miss you, but they're still going to get hungry today, right? We still need a car to drive in. We, we need all of the stuff associated. So you're betting if I don't make it home, I need to have something substantial, right? Get it out of your mind that these little five and $10,000 policies, they're a slap in the face. They're an absolute slap in the face. If that's what you think it, it, buying a life insurance policy is about, you're wrong, right? Now, sometimes we get in a situation where that's what we got to do. But damn it, if we're planning, let's not wait till the last minute to then do that, okay? So you're betting I'm going to die too soon. The insurance company on the flip side of the coin has all of the numbers, all of the statistics, and they're betting that you're actually going to live a very, very long time. So people say, I don't understand. Why would I stroke a hundred dollar check and they're insuring me for a quarter of a million dollars? Because the way the law works is the moment you hand me the money, you're insured. Okay. So we write the application and you, you know, the, let's say the premium was just making up numbers of a hundred dollars and we're writing a quarter of a million dollar insurance policy. Doesn't matter what type or what kind we'll write. That's what we're writing. And we get to the end, you sign the application and you sign the thing that's called the conditional receipt and you slide the check across the table, or if I'm doing it electronically, I enter your banking information and I send the application to you for an electronic signature and you strike it and, and hit accept and, and it comes back to me and it's submitted to the insurance company. Once that happens, if, if that money was exchanged right then and there, you are insured for whatever the face amount of the insurance policy is. Now, why is that important? You give me the application, walk outside and have a heart attack and die, get struck by lightning, get hit by a car that ran a stoplight or stop sign and die. While the application's in the mail, mm -hmm. we're on the hook for whatever we wrote the insurance policy for, quarter million, half million, whatever, okay? That right there, let's pause right there because I don't think anybody thinks that. No, they don't understand that. They don't understand that. And that's very key. That's very, very key. So it doesn't matter. I just paid you for months of premium. God forbid anything happens to me. You still owe me that 200,000. You still owe my family or my beneficiaries. That's we're on the hook right then and there. We're on the hook. So, you know, that, that is why it is, there are so many guidelines and rules around writing an insurance contract, you know, and, and as the agent, so many hoops I've got to jump through to ask the questions and make sure that you are not falsely disclosing something or, or not disclosing something to me, right? So that's where all of that comes from. But once we get through that piece, now we, we got to figure out, okay, well, what, do, what are we doing? You know, what type, what kind? And, and that's really the basis of our conversation today. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to encourage everybody, follow me at WealthWaveDrake on Facebook. That is my Facebook professional page where you'll be invited to see the long version of what I'm going to go through today, right? Once a week per month, we do a How Money Works Masterclass. And I'm going to share with you some tidbits of the masterclass that we did on life insurance awareness this month. And I'm actually going to be doing it next month as well, because I don't care who you are, Every month is life insurance awareness month. It, it every is, day is life. every day. You gotta have this stuff, right? You gotta have something. You gotta and the have difference, something. The difference between your family in this country, your family in the United States leaping ahead financially or inching forward incrementally is the size of your insurance policy. Period yeah. point blank. 
death runs in everybody's family, right? Now we hope everybody lives a very long and, and, and you know, eventful, full life and, and you live to be well into your 80s, 90s, or even hundreds. But the truth of the matter is, is that's not what happens all the time. People's lives get cut short prematurely. The difference between your family climbing from where you are and moving that needle forward transformationally, right, is the size of the insurance policies that you have on your family, nothing else. I, I hear you, the struggle and they're holding me back and, and I can't get ahead of my job and, and you know what, education, and I need a new opportunity and you know, I'm, I keep getting looked over. Lived it, been there, done that. And I'm not telling you all those things don't matter. What I'm telling you is the equalizer is the size of your insurance policy that your family is insured for, right? Yeah. Because my grandparents pass away and they leave half a million dollars to the family. Guess what? The debts are paid off. We might be able to pay the house off. We got money left behind for the kids and grandkids, right? Fast forward, the parents pass away and then they have maybe a little bit bigger insurance policy. Maybe they have a three quarter of a million dollar policy or a million dollar policy on them because they took some of the proceeds and they multiplied it, right? And now all of a sudden they pass away. What comes down to me? A million dollar insurance policy. Well, the original house was already paid off. Maybe we leveraged that a little bit. Now my house is paid off. Now my debts are paid off and I'm, and I'm probably still pocketing, you know, half a million, three quarters of a million dollars. You see where I'm going right. with this, with this chain yeah. thing? Now my insurance That's policy is bigger. Wealth. Now the next generation's insurance policy is bigger. But what's the difference between what I'm doing and what you're doing? If I'm doing that and you're not doing that, Every time a generation passes on and we are absorbing tax-free half a million, three quarters of a million, a million dollars, right? And you're not, you know what happens? I start moving into a better neighborhood. I start sending my kids to better schools. I start having access to better technology. I start have, having access to better everything. And you don't, you're still struggling. Right. We're, we're still trying to figure out the little five and $10,000 insurance policy. Right. And all of a sudden, right. You know, we're, 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 all the crazy crap we do to try to raise funds to bury our loved one. And we still got left with the debt and, and the mortgage and all that stuff. And You'll stress never catch and up. mental health issues that creep right. in. And then you're on the hook because you might be stressing yourself out to a heart attack. You'll and never then now catch where up. are your loved ones? That's right. You'll never catch up. And so the wealth divide gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Unbeknownst to you, you're fighting a battle over here. The battle's fought right here, right? Yeah. Just taking care of this little simple thing. So let me share my screen and uh, we're going to get into it really quickly. You have the power. I have the power. All right. That's a throwback <laughs> for anybody who knows. <laughs> I told him before we started that this wasn't the open mic session, but yeah, he, uh, yeah he's auditioning. <laughs> yeah. Forget about that. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to skip around on this one here. So, you know, stay with me where you can. Um, but this was our How Money Works Masterclass on Life Insurance Awareness Month. And, okay. you know, I'm going to I'm gonna share one thing with you. And, and, you know, Nicole, as we do more podcasts and, and webcasts and we talk about this stuff, you know, I always base my conversation around these seven money milestones. I truly believe that anyone listening, you are seven money moves away from heading in the direction that you need to be and seeking prosperity. But proper protection is, in my opinion, if not the biggest, the second biggest in this, um, in this gamut. You know, the first is, is part of this, and that's financial education. We truly believe that, you know, you have to educate yourself. You, you have to unlearn what you thought you, you learned, because guess what? Yeah. You didn't learn in high school. High schools don't teach this stuff, nope. right? Most colleges don't teach this stuff. You can go have a financial management degree and still not know some of this stuff. You'll, you'll know how to calculate beta and alpha and you'll understand standard deviation, but understanding how to protect your family, not something talked about in schools, right? Mm -hmm. So here's, here's the next thing is that, you know, we were just talking about this. Ironically, protection of your family's assets called life insurance. Most people think it's way more expensive than it is, right? And, and the second thing is most people don't know how much to get. Here's a good rule of thumb for you. 10 times your family income is the amount of life insurance that that's usually where you want to be. All right. So this is what I was talking about. If you're coming out and you're just figuring it out and you're just starting out in life, you know, the median income here in Jacksonville for single income earners is $26,500 a year for two person households. It jumps to just over 51,000. All right. Mm -hmm. That means your household should have somewhere between a quarter and a half a million dollars worth of coverage. That right. should be on the household. 
Why? If, if I get hit by the bus and, and I've got a quarter of a million dollars worth of insurance on me, the family doesn't, doesn't skip a beat now. Right. Right. Now, you know, the average family right now is holding about $16,000 worth of credit card debt. So, yeah. you know what? If that quarter million dollar injection comes, the credit card debt is gone, right? We got a little money that we got to pay for final expenses. That's where the ten dollars to $15,000 comes from. So, we parted $30,000 out of the quarter of a million. I got $220,000 left. Yeah. Right? You know what you got on your hands now? You, you have an opportunity to change the direction of your family simply because we planned. And we, I hate talking about it because it's like, look, yes, I get it. This means that your loved one's not here, but there's a chance they may not be here anyway, right? So why not hedge against what's the inevitable? That's what we're talking about here. So if you earn $100,000 a year, you should have a million on your family, all right? That's what we need to be thinking about. Now, how do you figure it out? Yeah, there's some things, you know, you can't just go out and buy a million dollar, you know, insurance policy, not knowing what you're doing. You may be a little older and it costs more, or you have debts weighing down your disposable income, or you know you got a bunch of kids running around, so you can't afford to do that stuff. So you've got to tailor fit what's going on to, to what's going on, all right? Only 59% of Americans have some type of life insurance, and half of that number is underinsured, meaning you have some life insurance, but when it comes in, it's not enough. Right. That's the thing that drives me crazy. I sit down with people wow. all the time and say, hey, talk to me about how you're handling your life insurance. Yeah, we got something through, through, through work. The place you hate, the place you can't wait to get away from, <laughs> that you're burning all your sick time and vacation time, you're on your last occurrence, you may get let go this week. If, if you catch a flat tire or there's a traffic accident and you get there late, you may get laid off. That place is the place that's responsible for your family's future. No. Nope. What, ha what happens if you're one of the people that got laid off during the pandemic? Yeah. Your insurance yeah. went away. Yep. Did the need go away? No. So you're un you are part of the underinsured if all you have is work insurance, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a whole other conversation. So you've got to start figuring that stuff out. But here's the age old question, Sean, you know, I know a little bit about insurance, but what's the difference? I've heard about term insurance. I've heard about permanent insurance and, and, and how does it work? So let's go through a quick analysis here. Here's term or temporary insurance, right? As you can see, provides protection for a specific period of time, 10, 20, or 30 years, okay? Mm -hmm. Here's what I will share with you. In my analysis, I truly believe the most volatile time in a person's life is between the ages of about 25 and 45, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything that's usually gonna happen to you is gonna happen to you right there, right? I'm gonna fall in love, fall out of love. I'm gonna buy a house, may lose a house. I'm gonna get a car, get the wrong type of car note, it's gonna to be too much for me, I may lose it, right? Or maybe not, maybe I did it right. I'm gonna get that first job that I really liked and lose it or get laid off. Uh, we're gonna hit a recession where we're, our income's gonna shrink, maybe it's gonna grow. If I'm gonna be in school or go back to school, you're gonna do it during that time period. Uh, you know, all the stuff, I'm gonna get married, maybe divorced, the kids are gonna come along. 25 to 45 is when we see that happening, mm -hmm. right? Before then, you're still partying and figuring out, after then, you know what? I ain't got time for this. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> right? Nicole, you and I are approaching that, 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 that place where, you know, we don't have time for that. You know, listen, things got, things got to run smooth. Okay. And so typically speaking, this period of time is, is where your responsibilities are high and your income may not be necessarily big enough to match your responsibilities. And so this is usually where you see people raising children. I got that first mortgage, which the first like 20 years of the mortgage is all interest, by the way. Right. right? Maybe I'm paying off my student loans. Maybe I'm running a company or I'm part of a startup or something like that. Right. Or maybe I'm a young executive and I'm trying to figure it out. So I need a large amount of insurance to cover me while I have this large liability on my family. I just picked up a $300,000 mortgage. I got a $50,000 car note. I've got, you know, all, I got $60,000 worth of student loan. Those are the heavy burdens on your family, right? Oh, and if my life is cut short, man, I can't afford a five, $600 a month insurance payment. So I need something temporary. All term insurance is, is you're paying for the cost of the insurance locked in at your age, your gender, your demographic, for a specific period of time. That's it, all right? I'm just paying the cost of it. It's not generating any dividends. It's not generating any cash. I'm just paying the cost of the insurance. It's almost like an interest-only loan, right? At the end of this time period, we still got 
to figure out what we're going to do, but all I'm covering is the cost of it, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens when, when the term is over? Well, you have some questions that you need to ask yourself. Um, do I still need this coverage, right? And this is what I tell folks, look around within one to two degrees of who you know, right? Before you employ a strategy, right? That, and, and I say it all the time, do you want to do it how, how, yeah. how affluent people do it? Or you want to do it how common people do it, right? Yeah. Or, or Nicole and I have a different conversation. You want to do it sure how black do. people do it? Or you want to do how white people do it? Exactly. Which one you want, exactly. right? And so people laugh when I say that. And I say, look, I want to do it the way the wealthy and the affluent have done it and are doing it. And so they employ this strategy for a time, but it's not an end all be all because guess what? At the end of this, you might probably still have a mortgage payment, right? You may still only have one income to depend on. Your kids may still be at home with you. Even at 25, they still be, may still be at home with you. They are there. They are there. We're seeing more and more what's called the sandwich generation, where we have the oldest generation at home, we've got the parents, and we've got the youngest generation at home. It's called a sandwich okay. generation. Well, now I got two people that are dependent on me. If I've got elderly family that I'm taking care of, I don't want them necessarily in a care facility. I am the long-term care person. Then they depend on my income. But then I got the youngest generation. They depend on my income. So you may still have some obligations at the end of this. So that's what you have to figure out. But here's what happens now. I'm 20 years or 30 years older. So I started this thing at 25, but now I'm you know, 45 or 55. And at that age, that's when all the, all the genetic things start to pop in on you right? And so the arthritis, the gout, the high blood pressure, the diabetes, all those things that you've taken care of yourself over the years, but some of those things just pop up anyway. Right. And so now I want to re-up my insurance, but it may not may, it's definitely going to cost you a little bit more. And there's also a chance you may not qualify. All right. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at those things when you're looking at temporary or term insurances. Now, a quick little nugget for all of you work insurances, the end all be all folks that are out here. I want you to, when you're going through your open enrollment time, we're at that time of year, September, October, November, December is typically open enrollment for the following year, 2021, coming up for your workplace benefits. Right. And when it comes to the life insurance section, you know, they give you one to two times your salary free, and then you can purchase an additional, you know, two to three times your salary for a maximum usually of five times your salary without any what's called evidence of insurability. So we can do five times your income as insurance, no questions asked. And, and that's attractive to people say, look, I got half a million dollars worth of insurance to my job and it's only like $8, mm -hmm. that, right? Or even $8 a month. So why would I do anything on my own? I want you to get into the fine print there. And I want you to start asking the questions during your open enrollment of this. Is it portable? Meaning, can I take it with me? So I, very important, not just I quit, but if I get fired, can I take this with me? Right? Yep. And if it is portable, what are the hoops that I got to jump through to take it with me? Meaning, am I going to have to fill out that evidence of insurability in order to take that five times my salary with me when I leave? Very important questions. Sometimes what, what you don't know is the insurance company has the option of saying, no, we, we don't allow you to take it with you if you, if you leave. If you die, you got to die while you work here. Yeah, right? most, most of them are like that, especially Most of now. them are like that. But also keep in mind, die while you work here also means I'm not out on sick leave. I'm not out on FMLA. I actually am on my normal eight to five duties and I happen to die while I was working. Keep in mind that. Here's the second question that you want to ask. Okay, it's portable. Does the benefit reduce on me at any point in time? So I've got a quarter million today. I jump through the hoops of the evidence of insurability. I take it with me. And then all of a sudden I look up in, you know, 20 years and I hit age 65, it went down another 50%. I hit age 70, it went down another 50%. The benefit reduces, but the payment stays the same or possibly increases on you. You got to ask those two questions because that'll start giving you some insight into whether work insurance is all that it's cracked up to me. I call work insurance icing on the cake, right? It's as if you went to a restaurant and you ordered dessert first, yet a creme brulee comes out and it's delicious and you love it, but are you going to be full? You're not. Nope. You're, you're not going to be full at all. But matter of fact, you're going to be even more ravenous and disappointed if that's the only thing you had to eat. So that's term insurances and how that works. Are we doing all right, Nicole? Any questions there before we move on? 
Uh, no, but it makes all the sense because I mean, I was I was ignorant of that fact with uh, my last employer. Um, there you go. I, you know, on my own, and um, yeah, you can't you take nothing with you with regards to that. And I actually did uh, a couple more times my salary because I knew I had student loan debt. You know what I mean? I didn't, you know, at the time I didn't have a fiance, you know, everything was going to go to my mom. So I was like, I'm making sure that I'm covered and she can just take care of everything. Should I go before her? That's right. um, but yeah, like, yeah, once that, once you get kicked to the curb, it's like, mm. it's a wrap. It's a wrap, B. What do I do now? Um, <laughs> you know, what do I do now? Or I, I can't afford it because I knew how little I was paying at work. And it's like, if right. I do it on my own without the education, yep. I'm like, oh, well, okay, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to try to get that next job so I can make sure I get covered again real quick. Yeah, yeah. Well, that brings that, those things bring me to an important um, point, and that's about the permanent insurance. Now, I, I'm not going to lie to you. This is big boy stuff here. Yeah. Right. I think everyone should have a term insurance. I'm the financial advisor that believes in addition to not instead of. Right. And here's what I mean by that. I think that in addition to your work insurances, you should have your own insurance policy that you control because the employer controls the work insurance, meaning they can terminate at any time. They can reduce the benefits at any time. They can do whatever they want because it belongs to them, doesn't belong to you. You're just the beneficiary. You're yep. a certificate holder, right? Yep. But this is big boy stuff we're getting ready to talk about now. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie to you and say, oh, it's easy. It's simple. It, it, it is, but you got to be prepared to make that sacrifice and commitment for your family, knowing what this thing's going to do for you. So here's permanent insurance. And I think that this is something you should also consider starting at a younger age when you were in your twenties. Why? It's cheapest. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so here is, here is why all of the things that, that hold true for term insurance hold true for permanent insurance, right? You, you, you need it because of all of the burdens, all of the things that you have on your family, but here's the differences though, right? So it's going to cover you not just for a specific period of time. It's going to cover you for your entire life, typically through age 121. Okay. Mm. So if, if you started this in your 20s, and, and I'm telling you, I write these on kids when they're born. Yeah. When they're born. I write a quarter of a million dollar insurance policy on the kid when, it, when the kid is born. We're going to talk about why here in a second. Did I right? do that? Number one, it's dirt cheap. Yeah, we, we, we did that. Okay. Right. You had a, you had a niece that we did that for, because you said, wait a minute, this, now that I understand that, why wouldn't I do that from the beginning? You should right. hear all the benefits of why you do that. Right. Yep. You get covered for life. Number one, number two, it's going to, it's going to give you the ability to add some, some other options, some optional riders on there. But number three, it becomes flexible and it's building a cash accumulation mm -hmm. feature on the inside there. And here's why that's awesome. Right. And, and I always frame the conversation like this. What do you have in your portfolio that's 90 percent liquid, 90 percent liquid in the first 10 years, meaning I can reach in and touch the money if I need it within the first 10 years. Right. Mm -hmm. That also multiplies if I check out. Right. So if I put a thousand dollars in my bank account today and I die, the bank is going to return to my beneficiaries a thousand dollars. OK, if I have a thousand dollars in my insurance policy today, the insurance company is going to return me probably a quarter of a million, 350,000, half a million dollars to my family. I believe in low speed multiplication, not high speed addition, right? And, and insurance is low speed multiplication. What do you have that's growing tax free? Meaning I'm putting that thousand bucks in that 500 bucks in that 200 bucks in and it's generating a rate of return. But when I reach in to get it, I don't pay any taxes on that. Right? right? Right. And there's a, there's a few people in our administration that know about that, right? Everybody's mad about that $750 tax bill. I'm not mad. Just teach me how to do it, right? This is a part of it. What do you have that's going to generate income for you on the other side of retirement, right? And oh, by the way, when it's time for me to pass on, goes to my beneficiaries 100% tax-free. What do you have? And oh, by the way, you can get for 200 bucks or less. That's what we want. Nothing. You don't have anything, right? Permanent insurance does that for you. You can reach in and grab the money out for whatever you want, okay? And I've been doing this for years, and I said, you know what, I'm going to try it myself because I have an insurance policy just like this. And two years ago, I called up the insurance company, and I said, um, hey, I want to take out about $3,000. I want to go to, uh, I want to take my family on vacation. And the first thing they said is, we don't care the reason. How do you want it? 
<laughs> we like that. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you mean, how do I want it? And they say, well, how do you want it? Do you want it regular mail or do you want it under your mat in the morning? Yeah. I said, well, hell, give it to me under my mat in the morning. I'm a concierge kind of guy, man. Champagne, bro, take me there, right? And so they said, it'll be under the mat in the morning. And I literally woke up the next morning, opened my front door, and under the mat was a check for $3,000 from my insurance company. Now, here's what got better is I didn't have to pay it back if I didn't want to. It's called a non-structured loan. Right. Like and so I choose to because I want that to be a I want that three thousand to not come out. I want it to be a part of my insurance policy. Right. But technically, I didn't have to. Right. And I took that three stacks and went on vacation and had an amazing time. Went and saw my family in the Caribbean. We drank. We ate. We party whole nine yards. Right. And when I came back, I, I paid it back. Right. Right. Really, because I want to see, you know what? I've been saying this this whole time. But is it really that easy? It is really that easy. During the pandemic, I couldn't tell you the amount of people who have called me up who have said, Drake, I'm a little bit of a spot. You know, it's not that I got laid off, but they've shrunk our hours or they've cut us back to try to keep us on. Mm -hmm. And I had some things I wanted to do around the house or pay off. You know, what can we do? And I looked in the portfolio and I said, okay, look, if we reach in the IRA, we got a penalty plus taxes. If we reach in the 401k, we got a penalty plus taxes. But guess what? You got 20, 30, $40,000 sitting here in the insurance policy. No penalty, no taxes. How do you want it? And they were like, what do you mean, how do you want it? And I said, do you want it regular mail or do you want it under your mat in the morning? Same line I hit them with. Yeah. yeah. And they said, under the mat in the morning. Yeah. And literally those folks called me back and said, I can't believe it's that easy. And I said, that's what I've been talking to you about. I had uh, uh, quite a few more people that also turned it off. They mm -hmm. did get laid off right? We had people going through a divorce and get laid off during the pandemic. How horrible, right. right? But you know what? They called me up and said, hey, I'm in a tough time right now. I'm trying to figure some things out. And, and I, I just, I don't know what to do. And I said, pause here for a second. Let's look at all the debts that are coming out of your, your, your money on a monthly basis. And I said, hey, you got a few hundred dollars coming out for your insurance policy. Let's stop the contribution. They said, what do you mean stop the contribution? I said, we're going to stop it. And we got the insurance company on the phone. And I said, hey, based on how much cash that's in the policy right now, how many payments can we stop? Mm. And mm. they said, you know, I had some people, you know, qualify for 60 payments, 75 payments, right? Now you, you paid monthly now. So if we're stopping 60 payments, that's what, five years? That's a lot. That's, right? That's beautiful. If we're oh, stopping I mean. 75 payments, right, we're, we're, now we're stopping multiple years that the insurance policy can pay for itself. And I looked at my clients and I said, do you need five years? They're like, no, I'm thinking I need like three months, maybe six months. I said, then stop it for six months and let's talk again in six months and yeah. see where you are. If we need to extend it, we can. But because we made the sacrifice on the front end, the insurance policy is going to take care of itself. Yep. Now I don't have to put my family's future in jeopardy because I got a life thing going on. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, that little term insurance you got on the side, we're going to pull a little money out of the permanent insurance to pay for the term insurance while you figure out what's going on. Right. right. That's what this thing does for you. Love right. It. Now, Love here's it. the other thing. A couple things that I'm going I'm to I'm cut it short because like I said, I don't want to go through the whole thing. I want you to come to my master class. But here's the other part that you need to be very, very aware of. We can tag on a long-term care feature. Yeah. Now, what that happens? Is amazing. Yeah. What happens if I get seriously sick or injured? I get in a car wreck and I'm really, really banged up. I don't die, but I'm really, really banged up, right? And and I need somebody to come in and feed me, bathe me, wipe my butt, get me out of bed, right? All that stuff. What do I do? Do I just you know wait for Medicaid to kick in? Yep. That's what, that's what everybody does now. Now, here's what you don't know that I'm going to be hopefully not the first person to tell you. If I am, I'm sorry. For Medicaid to kick in, you got to be penniless. Mm -hmm. You can only have $2,000 to your name plus your primary residence here in the state of Florida for Medicaid to kick in. And I've done long-term care uh, certifications in multiple states where I broker these products. It's the same. It's within about $500 to $1,000, depending on what state you go to. Some states are $2,500. Some are $2,200. Some are $3,000. To your name, that's it. I'm talking about the jewelry, the furniture, the the, the yeah. IRA, the four, all that stuff got to be liquidated before Medicaid will kick in on you. Yeah, right? so, so you're you literally out on the street because uh, you can't do nothing, anything else. No, and that was and that piece I did not know. I'll yeah. tell you, 
I knew about long-term uh, care insurance uh, a few, several years ago from a volunteer of mine who, you know, she's in her 70s and she had her life insurance policies. She, her policy grew with her. So she wanted to go into an assistant living like she was in that she was in a facility that, or she was going to go to a facility that as she aged or, you know, progressed through her life. Right. Depending on her need, her, her long-term care took care of that for her. And she told That's me, right. Nicole, make sure you get long-term care insurance. And I, and I literally, because this is even before I met you, Sean, it phew, went over my head, but it stuck back here. So when we had our conversation and I was like, okay, what about this long-term care thing? And when you brought it back up, I was like, yep. I remember exactly what she said because it, it's a lifesaver. It's, it's a complete lifesaver. You know, on the screen right now, you can see the average, average. So that means there's some higher, some lower. Yeah. Average total cost adult daycare, 73,000. Assisted yeah. living, 187,000, right? Yeah. Home yeah. health aid, 196. Nursing home, semi-private, meaning you're sharing a room with a stranger. Yeah, we don't like It's that. almost $350,000. Private room, 391,000. What are we talking about here? Where are you going to get that money from? Where are you going to get that money from? After you retired and you get your social security and you don't have an extra portfolio that you still need to sit on. Yeah, no. This is what this does. Yeah? yeah. So this is what it costs. So this is the power of that, of that standalone permanent policy because we can add things on. We call it the Swiss army knife, mm -hmm. right? You can add things on to it. You can, you can add on these riders. And then now they're, they're really getting into talking about critical illness and chronic illness that they're adding on to these permanent insurance policies. Mm -hmm. And that's how it works, you know, covering case of heart attack, stroke, cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, right? Something that you can pull out up to 90% of the policy amount in yeah. the event that you are stricken with any of these things. And then God forbid you got to be cared for, you know, we got that long-term care feature as well. So, that is really the focus of, of the masterclass. And, Love it. you know, Love it. it's, it's, I go into great detail. There's four masterclasses that we do right now. Um, shameless self-promotion. We're going to be doing one this Saturday at one o'clock. I'll, I'll shoot you out the info, Nicole, so that you can, um, you know, pass it along. Um, yeah, yeah. But, and we're going to continue to do them because financial literacy is not just something that happens once a year, once a month, that type of thing. For me, uh, it, it's, it's a way of life right now. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we, we give out the How Money Works book. Uh, you know, if you're interested, reach out to Nicole. She's got a copy of her book there. If you're interested in, in getting a copy for yourself, Obviously uh, you the know, best. reach out to her. You can reach out to me at Wealthwave Drake on Facebook. Uh, you can go to my website, which is wealthwave.com forward slash Drake. And check out this material. Check out the information. Shoot me a message. Hey, jump on my calendar. You know, if you just want to have a conversation, I don't charge a fee to consult. So if you just want to have a conversation, you don't know about this stuff, you're not sure, you just want some clarity, I'd love to do that for you. Let's take 20 or 30 minutes and, you know, just figure it out. You know, let's just figure out what's going on, what is going to take, and let's make it happen. Yeah. But, um, you know, we, got, we got to get it done. We got to get it done because, like I said, you know, our, our communities are falling behind for want of a nail. Yep. And, you know, if, if you have that nail now, everything that goes in line with that, you know, doesn't fall apart. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, quit screwing around. You know, if I told you for the cost of a cup of coffee or the cost of, you know, lunch every day for a week, if you did that, you could more than pay for enough insurance. Oh, yeah. It's a, yeah. Put it like this. People like to say they don't have enough money to do whatever. You got more than enough. What I like to say to people, your money is allocated in various different areas. There's no more we are broke, I don't, I don't have, no. Your money is allocated to other places. So look at your allocations and cut those luxury expenses or whatever, you know what I mean? That, yeah. you know, you're going to Starbucks, you're going to Dunkin' Donuts, you're going to da -da -da, doing whatever, or you're going to go eat out more cook at home, your life depends on it, especially right now. Yeah. Things are going to be forever changing, especially in life insurance. So why wait tomorrow? We yeah. To talk about it and find out, get the quote, because the quote kind of locks you in. Get the quote. And the quote grows with your age. So the more, the older you are, 
the more you're going to pay. So you 20 year olds, 30 year olds, even early 40 year olds. Do it now. Do it, do it right now. Do I'm now. here as a testimony to tell you, you know, I'm about to knock on 43. Um, I did this work. I don't even know how many, a couple of years ago. I don't even know. Um, yeah. And I figured it out because I was like, I wasn't making a whole bunch, but I knew I needed this in place to, to secure my future. We don't think enough about right you know the future we think right now today oh i don't need um you know all of this food i don't need yeah you do it's called yep. stock up you it's do. called get everybody's mental capacity at a lower level that they don't have to stress when something the bottom does fall out and we didn't see it coming and, and from a mental health perspective you're not yourself when you lose a close loved one no I, i've watched uh, no. people in my family pass away here even recently yeah and you're, you're 18 to 24 months before you get back to, to some sense of normalcy. That's the grieving process. Yeah. And you know, I had a friend of mine who lost his father here uh, a little over a year ago. All right. And, you know, he was taking it very hard because his, he and his father were very close. Mm -hmm. And I called him up on the phone. You know, one of my very good friends, he's up in Chicago. I called him up on the phone and I said, look, man, I, nothing I can tell you is going to take the pain away but let me share something with you that I've realized is the difference between those who get through the grieving process and come out better on the other side and those who don't. Yeah. And that's this, take the time to be a human being. Mm -hmm. This is not the time to be macho man, Superman. I say yeah. your wife and your kids need to see you be human. Yeah. They need to see that grief. If you need to cry, cry. If yep. you need to weep, weep. If you need to scream and yell and shout, man, call me on the phone and just yell at me and scream at me. But be a human being mm -hmm. because if not, it's going to haunt you. It's going to beat you up and, and it's going to manifest itself in, in other ways mm -hmm. that you didn't imagine. Yeah. And, and you don't need that. Yeah. And life insurance is part of that. When your family receives that windfall from the inevitable happening, now we can go be human. We can breathe a little bit more. We can say, look, look we can now take the time. Imagine your loved one dying today, mm -hmm. you're burying tomorrow, and you got to be at work two days from now, three days from now. Because yeah. corporate America is not set up for that. Yeah. Right? You get, what, three days off? Bereavement? Is it? Five. Oh, I, <laughs> five. Oh, Thank you. Five? Oh yeah. my gosh. And if you have a really good rapport, they might give you an extra week. Maybe. Oh, I might get 10? Maybe. 10 days? Maybe. Oh, but thank after that, you, you got so to use your own time. You have to use your own time. Yeah, so you got to get take care of what you got to take care of, get over it, get back to work, and no. function. No, no. This, this is all part of that. You, mm -hmm. you need you need to be able to go to your employer and say, look, I'm going out on FMLA, right? And I'll be back in three months or I'll be back in six months because yeah. you think of all the stuff that comes along with it, right? That's when things aren't in place and you got yeah. to figure things out. God. Even if you have life insurance people or your family, your, your elders have life insurance, pull it out, revisit it. Revisit it. Understand what is in there what you need to do yeah if you don't you better get something quick you know i had i speak about that a lot because i'm i mean working at a hospice organization for a number of years you see people going through these things you see the people that don't have it together and you see the other people that do have it together after their loved one has passed yeah. and it's like it's night and day so i'm like i mean i've taken so many cues and i'm like yeah no no if, if i what i can control is having some ducks in a row. I'm not going to have all the answers, but I know this one piece of information, this one piece of security for my family, what, whoever that may be, is golden. And I can Absolutely. literally rest in peace. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So it's... thank you so much. Anytime. For all of that. Um, yeah, we've had several sessions with Sean, and they have all been informative, um, aha moments. I know they have been for me. They will be available and share them. Please rewatch them, take notes. I know there's a lot of information packed into this time, but 
my goal is to bring people information that's going to help them. Uh, we are in the age of information. There's nothing we can't find out. And my little piece in this puzzle, this cog wheel of life, is to try to give you something that's going to help you heal through whatever you're trying to go through and you can always go back to. So thank you, Sean. I appreciate it. And we'll be back again with something else because I have some other things in my mind. So Absolutely. Thank you. And Anytime. follow him and I'll send all of that other stuff. So yes. That'll be good.